Well, hey folks, Real Honesty with John Rithlin, and this is Which Was Worse, Episode 2, Electric, Not Electric Boogaloo. Great joke, though. And shout out to at Hitman683, again, for the inspiration to start the series. Two more title reigns I'm going to talk about. If you've seen Episode 1, you know what to expect from this. I'm going to take aspects of both title reigns and compare them. But Kevin Nash's WWE title reign from November 94, just after Survivor Series 94, to Survivor Series 95, and then Hulk Hogan's WCW title reign from July of 94 to October of 95. Now, yeah, you might think, <clears throat> well, how are they similar? One was longer than the other. But much like my uh, the one I did about Jeff Jarrett and Triple H's reigns of terror, one was a little longer than the other. But they both have aspects that are similar. And I just came up with this idea actually just before, like, just, be it's just before work that I'm going to be shooting this. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's a great idea. I'll actually do that. So you gotta set the scene of how the title reigns began. Kevin Nash had been Shawn Michaels' bodyguard, and they had had, you know, a bit of division. And Bob Backlund had just beaten Bret Hart for the uh, WWE title at Survivor Series 94. And then at a house show, not even a few days later, Kevin Nash beats him in like eight seconds. You know, bell ring, kick to the gut, boot, pow, you know, jackknife, power bomb, one, two, three. And it, we're off and running with Kevin Nash. He's gonna lead the WWE new generation. Not so much. Uh, some of it was booking. A lot of it was the fact that Nash just wasn't ready. Diesel was not ready. They had to stop running house shows, like B-shows at one point. <clears throat> because house show attendance had dropped significantly. Ratings weren't all that good. Revenue wasn't all that good. A lot of it also had to do with just 1995 in general. WWE like lost money. WCW lost money. Or at least maybe until like later in the year. And I'm sure WWE started to recover a little bit later in the year. Smoky Mountain Wrestling closed down. ECW, I think, was the only company that might have been doing anything. I don't know. <clears throat> but the whole point is 1995 was a rough year. And I may do a Why 1995 Sucked in Wrestling series starting in 2020. That way I could just do a 20-year reflection on this stuff. Or 25-year reflection, actually, is what it would be, because I can math. But looking at Nash, he won the title dramatic fashion. And his first match of really any big significance was at the Royal Rumble about two months later against Brett. <clears throat> and it was a 30-minute classic. It was really, really well done, like 27, 30 minutes. And then because they didn't want either guy to get beat, they had a bunch of run-ins. Like you had Shawn Michaels and Owen and Bob Backlund and people run in, stuff like that. And you had that happen. And that was a way to kind of get Brett a little bit of an edge. And then you attack Bob Backlund. He beat Bob Backlund at WrestleMania 11, which was a terrible show. But then, <clears throat> Nash, like, you know, as Diesel, he faces Shawn Michaels in the best match at WrestleMania 11, which is like being the nicest guy in prison, as Jim Cornette would say. Not exactly necessarily the, you know, uh, the best compliment. And then he would have other matches, <clears throat> like, at, like at house shows and stuff like that, at In Your House. And I don't remember all the type, uh, all the ones, but, so you're getting into, like, June and stuff like that, and... Even in when he faced Mabel at, um, I think he faced Sid at one point on one, on one of the In Your Houses, if I remember right. <clears throat> and then he faced Mabel at, you know, SummerSlam 95 and easily one of the worst matches of 1995. It was god-awful. It didn't help that Mabel pretty much just destroyed Kevin Nash's back and sides by, like, sit, just sit out sitting on him. Not even cushioning the blow and everything. And don't... Blame, I don't blame Nash at all for being upset about that. <clears throat> but that sets the scene there for what, where we're going to get to the last few months of Nash. And I might go back to a couple things. But now we look at Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan had signed with WWE, or, w, or had left WWE in like 93. Did Thunder in Paradise, did some stuff at Universal Studios. Dis, well, Disney MGM Studios at the time. Well, actually, I think they still had that. But anyway, the whole point is it was Disney MGM Studios where they shot the... Uh, <clears throat> where they shot um, the, you know, the Saturday Night TV. And Hogan got signed to uh, WCW in like April. I think it was about April or May, something like that. I think it was later in April. And they built up this whole thing with Ric Flair. Where, okay, Ric Flair was the, you know, finally the unified champion. They unified the WCW International and the WCW Heavyweight Championship. That was a whole mess for another day and everything. In fact, I could do at one point which title was less significant. There we go, WCW International or Universal Championship. Which one's less significant? That's a good idea. I think I'm going to do that one next. Um, but then Hogan beats Flair in a really good classic at, at Bash at the Beach 94. 
And they have a match. And Hogan had limited dates on his contract, so he wasn't always wrestling at all these pay-per-views. He was, at any pay-per-views that he wrestled at, of course he would go over because he's Hulk Hogan. And he had creative control. All the goddamn creative control in the world. I don't, I, I don't believe for a second that he didn't have full creative control. I'm, maybe he was the only one. <clears throat> but there's no way that Hogan didn't. And that Hogan didn't exercise it often because some decisions made no goddamn sense. Hogan beats uh, Flair in a classic at Bash at the Beach. Already one point, a little better for Hogan over how Diesel won the championship, even though it was a great, great moment. Hogan then faced Flair at Clash of Champions with Countout. I think Hogan lost because he couldn't get back in the ring because of his knee. Then Halloween Havoc 94. Terrible, terribly overbooked cage match. Mr. T's special guest referee, although I did like it the Bash at the Beach um, pay-per-view. Mr. T gets Sherry. Sherry gets knocked off the ropes and... <laughs> No, I'm sorry, I'm still laughing at what Bobby Heen said, but Mr. T catches Sherry, runs off with her, Bobby Heen, he's kidnapping her. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why that makes me laugh so goddamn much, but it just does. <clears throat> but then you just, you just look at like how stuff went from there. As you go to Halloween Havoc, overbooked like crazy. Sting tried to get in the cage, and he got knocked out by this masked guy. Sherry interfered. Mr. T finally counted down, so it was career versus title, and Flair ended up leaving. And Flair was Flair was supposed to be off for like a year, six months to a year. I think he was back by like January or February. Yeah, he was back like quickly, and it was ridiculous because it's like you should have given him a little more time off to make the stipulation mean something. Obviously, he wasn't going to be done for good, but ugh, it was just it was just terrible. That was overbooked like crazy. And then the worst, probably the worst match of Hogan's, um, <clears throat> or the second worst match of his title run against the butcher because he was revealed to be the attacker the butcher of course brutus the barber beefcake the zodiac the the man with no name the man with no good gimmick yeah bruce beefcake was pretty damn over but uh, just the booty man there's a whole bunch of the disciple it was pretty cool as a disciple because i didn't know that was him because he actually changed his look but against the butcher, it was a terrible starcade main event one of the worst ever Easily one of the worst ever. It's like it was just, <clears throat> it was rotten, in other words. And then he faced Vader in a couple matches, you know, a couple pay-per-view matches, and beat him, because of course. He did wrestle Vader at Bash of the Beach 95 um, in that cage match, which was ridiculous, where Hogan buried him and put on his headgear and ran into him. It was terrible. Or hit him with a headgear. It was one of the two. <clears throat> but... You just look at all of this stuff going on. Hogan wasn't on every single pay-per-view. The one thing I will say about Nash is Nash tried to defend it on every single pay-per-view, and WWE did do that better. But so Hogan, we're about to the summer of '95. So let's get back to the let's get back to Nash's title reign. That match with Mabel was atrocious, absolutely atrocious. Though it wasn't anything compared to that match he had with Bulldog at In Your House Four. The one in October, I don't remember exactly where it was, but it was like Cornette talked about it where he <clears throat> said that people were so bored by it that he dropped an elbow outside on Nash and it got a pop because people were like, oh, something's finally happening. So I think it was by that point, it might even been by the Mabel match that they realized that going with Nash as champion was a bad idea, especially with the attendance drops and just the match quality was bad. It wasn't all Nash's fault. Nash was never the best worker anyway. He's a really good bumper for a big guy. But he was never the best worker <clears throat> at all, and he fa and he you know he he faced everybody he could. He did the best he could with the title. I will give him that much. But it was a really rotten title reign. That match with Bulldog was absolutely terrible. It it it, it aged me terribly. I'm trying to figure out which was worse between In Your House um, in October '95 and Halloween Havoc in '95. That sounds like another comparison that I could do for which was worse. Maybe later this year in October, <clears throat> but. Then we go with Nash facing Brett at Survivor Series 95. Brett beats him, and that's the end of that. And then Nash gets the, any title shot that he got afterwards. I think he got a title shot against Sean at um, In Your House, Good Friends, Better Enemies, just before he left to go WCW. So Nash's title reign ends roughly, I think, like a few days before a year. If not just about a year, I think it was just a few days before a year. So, okay. And that was a record that actually stood, I think, until 
Cena beat it by a few days. I think he had like 373 days as champion. <clears throat> From September 06 to um, October 07. And it, it, might, it might have even been a little more than 373 days, but it was somewhere around that. <clears throat> and sorry for my throat, by the way. But, so Nash holds the title. Some, a couple good matches. Some not very good ones. And attendance and everything dropped pretty significantly. And then go back to Hogan. So by 95, you know, summer of 95, he's beating Vader. <clears throat> he was part of the War Games match at uh, Fall World 95. And then he faced a giant in a horribly overbooked um, main event, you know, show where he did the monster truck thing, you know, you know, it that took years off my life watching that shit, you know, where where it's like it's watching like you know two bulls try to do this, it's like watching this fisting thing going, and I'm looking like I'm trying to do like a bad like genie dance. Um, promise not to do that again. But it's just it's the whole point is it was just like watching just two, just they were they were like this, and it's just eh eh. And, and then Giant falls off the, you know, the, falls off the Kobo, the roof of the Kobo. But, of course, he lands on a pad or something, like, right below. I mean, I'm sure he did. Um, otherwise, he is superhuman, and he could survive that fall. But the whole point is, so, okay, they did this, and it was supposed to be Giant versus Hogan, and Hogan was in black because he was supposed to be feuding with the Dungeon of Doom, the dark side of Hulk Hogan, um, even though Hogan hates the dark side, a.k.a. black people. I'm standing by that because Hogan's a racist. He just feels bad he got caught. He just does. But anyway. Then they have the match. You know, Giant comes out. Not even wet. Nothing. Just charges in the ring. It was a typical Hogan versus Big Man match. And then they had the Yeti come out. And they had this... Uh, they, well, they had... They had a, first, they had people attack it. Jimmy Hart attacked the ref. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is so funny. Jimmy Hart attacked the ref. And, um... And then, you know, Hogan's trying to attack... Jimmy, and then you had Sullivan in there, and you had other people in there. Savage tried to come in. Luger came in, and then Luger attacked Savage, and then the Yeti, there was a mummy, <coughs> came out while while Giant had Hogan in a bear hug and tried to, you know, do a bear hug on Hogan as well from the other end, and it just looked like it was like a, like a double penetration, you know, goofy, goofy mummy, you know, giant porn thing, which I'm sure exists. No related news, I need to uh, erase my search history. I'll be right back. Kidding. Um, but I'm sure that is a thing. But it was ridiculous because it's like this double bear hug thing. It just looked absolutely atrocious. And then, <clears throat> even though the bell had been called because the ref had been hit, it was supposed to be where the title had changed hands on disqualification. So the Giant, in his first match, becomes the champion, but doesn't become the champion. But even though Hogan was wronged in the whole thing, because of a contract that Jimmy Hart had put up, Hogan couldn't get the title back, and the title was held up, and then Randy Savage was crowned champion at World War III, 1995. So you look at how they, you look at the aspects of it, some of the worst matches, some of that kind of stuff. Which was the best, which was the worst? I'm going to say that Hogan's was actually worse, because <clears throat> he didn't defend it on every pay-per-view, whatever, he had his own deal. But besides that match that he had with Flair to win the title, I can't name one really good match that he had otherwise. With Nash, at least he had the classic with Brett at the Rumble 95. A good match with Sean at, you know, um, Mania 11. I'm sure he had another match in there in one of the, uh, a couple of the In Your Houses or one of the In Your Houses that was pretty good. I can't recall it right now. But he also had the classic with Brett at <coughs> Survivor Series 95 where he lost the belt. Yes, the attendance and that kind of stuff dropped significantly, and Diesel wasn't a low, you know, was was the lowest drawing champion in a good while. That isn't all his fault, though. That's Vince's fault for putting the title on him and expecting fans to just gravitate to him. Now, yeah, they loved him, but they started to realize, hey, wait a second, this guy that we love, maybe it wasn't the best idea to put the title on him. With Hogan, it was buried. It buried way more people with Hogan's title reign, and it was shit booking all over. I mean, it was really shitty booking. So Nash's title reign just wins by a hair. So Hulk Hogan's uh, WCW title reign, his first WCW title reign, wins in the end as far as which was worse. It was the worst, especially the the whole end with the Halloween Havoc thing. That, that you know, takes the cake on anything. So that's what I got to say. 
So do you agree? Do you disagree with what I said? Like, share, comment, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. It's been Real Honesty with John Ritlin. And this is the beginning of a really, really fun series. I'm really going to enjoy this. Let me know what you guys think. See you soon.